anchors with Sammy. This seems rather. He's really putting me on. If I could choose a spot, which um, it's going to be more. It's going to have a million hits on YouTube in a couple of days. I put the helmet on so I'd like I look professional at least. <laughs> Nothing else. Um, lighting, makeup, yeah. all good. All right, we're going to pretend that I have climbed up the cliff and I've got to the top, all right? And we need to find some anchors and build our blade, but we want to position ourselves here so that when we're belaying, we can see our climber climb up the cliff. If we're standing way back there, it's going to be hard to communicate how to see with the climber. Um, so first of all, I'm going to have to go back to look for anchors, okay? There's obviously nothing here. Um, there's possibly stuff under that crack, but it's a bit dirty and mossy. I'm, I'm gonna, I could play around here, but I'm, I'm gonna even go way back further. Because sometimes at the top of cliffs, <laughs> you do need to go a long way back to find anchors, okay? And we're gonna use the climbing rope we've got here to link into all anchors. I'm gonna wander back, see what I can find back here. Um, and there's a few promising cracks, okay, so I'm going to chuck a few things in. I want to just nice. see okay. how you teach it. Can you film the whole thing from a different angle? Okay. Oh. See, not pretty good. You're trying to get the tug on it. So, so the thing is, I'm going to sit down there. So the pieces I put in need to be able to resist the force. And that, that's where the load will be. So I'll slid that in. Obviously, that takes a good load down in that direction. Okay. This might... Not the most promising looking crack, but we'll see. That might be better with a little can in there. That's definitely not going in. Can you set up in this area a lot of times with four times? <laughs> Never. But just the important thing you know, is, around, you know, like even Simon has, okay. has to check out a few pieces, right? Okay. Before he finds the best one. So there's a um, can there. Got a piece there. Now there's no magic number of pieces to build a belay, okay? You, you'll often hear um, number, you know, three pieces. But if they're all really suspect, you know, or funky, then you might go four or five. You know, so building blades often if it's around a you know great big tree with a big root system when one anchor is going to be fine but everything's a bit weird like this is this cams it's not bad this wire's not bad but yeah I'll, I'll definitely be needing three minimum maybe i'll even go yeah, a couple more the clip it's not part of a detached block very important that when you build your anchors that if you put something in a crack that just have a look at the big picture and make sure that the crack isn't part of a, a big detached block um uh, yeah i can see it's actually fused all the way like it all fuses in it's not actually you know sometimes just just look at the big picture and yeah make sure that not, not loose. Or if it is, and you might be forced to use it, think that if it was a worst case, say it was on a sloping ledge and the, cliff, the block was near the edge of a cliff, and if there was a chance that if, if it yeah, rolled, it's going to roll down and that's good. kill people. Yeah, there's something up here. Yeah, I'll definitely uh, be able to work something in, in the spot. Is that, is that not too clearing? Uh, All right. Oh, well, I'll. Um, I think it's just a little. See, like that. Um, if I put something in there, see, that's just a block sitting on top. So 
So that part there isn't attached to the main cliff. I might decide it's heavy enough and big enough and it's not going to jeopardize, you know, it's, it's, there's no way it can roll off and roll down and kill anyone. So I might think it's part, okay as part of the system. But um, yeah, just to let you know, that bit there is not fused to the rest of it, even though you might sort of suddenly think it is. So yeah. Um, Go for just for the sake of the exercise. So I'll pretend, you know, a little bit nervous about all of them. Okay. All right. So now I've got a link into all the anchors. Carabiners on the lot. So what I'm going to do is um, I want to sit all the way down there. So what I need to do is pull up enough rope so that when I clip into these anchors, I can easily get back to that ledge. Always err on giving yourself more rope than less rope because we can always shorten the rope up if it's too long, no big issue. But if it's too short, we can't just magically make it longer. So I'm going to pull up a bunch of rope. So it's about six meters. I'm putting more seven meters down to there, so I'm pretty far for eight meters of rope. I reckon that's more than enough. Okay. And to clip to these two, I'm going to tie a knot called the bunny ears knot. Yeah. And it looks like if I was going to tie a figure eight loop, the bite, that would be a figure eight loop. I'm tie the bunny ears. I'm just going to put that part through there and then flip that over the top so I have two loops coming out. And I can put one into each piece. And the beauty with the bunny ears is that I can adjust it by slight, finding the right um, end that goes into the other loop to, to get the tension right. So when I adjust it like that, now they're both sharing the load, okay? So if an anchor, if one of these pieces um, pulled out, it doesn't shock load the other one. All right. You see, I've got more than enough rope to get all the way down to there. Extra rope, okay? On this strand, I'm just going to put another bunny ears in here. One of those two. One there. One there. Well equalised. Now I'm going to come down to where I want to sit. Okay. Take all that off. Okay. I want to sit down here. What I'm going to do is tie two figure eight loops, and, you know, one into each rope, and I'm going to clip into myself. Okay. So. Carabiner. Put that into there, and I want to tie my figure eight loop to that. Now, here's a little tip um, if I pull that back and do that and tie my figure eight loop, see how it's the, the knot has sucked up some rope and it won't reach into there. So, a little tip to get it just right. So, pull that down, pull that back. A ham span of rope, okay, extra ham span, and that, that's going to be my figure eight loop, which is going to be just the right length to clip into there. So, bang, now I'm nice and tight on that one. This one here, I'm going to do the same thing. That's why I've got the loop to the end. It's on the ham span there. The figure eight loop. Layer. The arm side 
Okay, take me off the lane. I'm going to pull all the rope up. Get my blow device. Whatever you're using. That's up. me. That's me, pulls on Ado. Okay, now I can just, I could belay directly off my harness, or if I want to be a little bit separated, I can put the uh, device in like that. Okay. I can't remember, is, there, is it better to have it through you or through the anchors? Well, this is kind of a bit of both. It's right next to my harness. So you can tweak this. You can tweak this set up a little bit to how you want to do it. So if you wanted to be at the moment, well, I'll, 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 we'll see. Okay, you're on play Ado. Okay, okay. Climb. So you climb up the key. So Ado falls, okay, loads it, bang. Okay. I'm not going anywhere because this is nice and tight. Um, if it's a bit uncomfortable, I can pop myself out of here. So we are directly off the anchors now. And I've still got this bit of a leash of rope where I'm nice and tight. But and he's into yeah. four bits yeah. because... Yeah. That code only joins those two. All together, so anyway, there's a lot of different ways you can rig systems. Um, as long as the anchors are good, as long as all the anchors share the load, you know, if any of these anchors fail, the system doesn't go a little bit, of, you know, it's basically um, stays, it's not compromised in any way. Yesterday when I was instructing, actually, kid, kid I had, he had four anchors in, and we had this abseil set up, and the and an anchor blue, like the rock. He had this piece and I said, oh, I don't know if that's rock or guano, but the thing was so well equalized. And as someone was hanging off it, it's the, the nut blue and everything just kind of shifted an inch. But because it was well equalized, nothing was really compromised. But it certainly made us go, whoa, you know. But um, yeah, he did. He said something popped out. So is John going to initiate a failure there? So oh. it's a failure, but nothing's happened, okay? Because still sharing the load. You've got to ask yourself, if a piece popped, what would happen to my system? And if, if nothing happens, then that's good. Yeah. So, does that make sense to people, how they're gonna rig it? Up, but then it's about using momentum and um, swinging your body your all the way through. Oh, oh, see, I've already stopped it. You see, hang on, go again, go again. <laughs> you can do it. Um, come on, come on, come on. Oh, He's got it. <laughs> no, oh, oh, stop. Uh, Shake out while you can. If you can shake out a little bit, do so here because you're not going to run out of places to shake out. And it's kind of going to be on for the last bit. So I'll give you a few. So coming through here, there's going to be a hidden. There's a hidden foothold under here too. When you when you're coming around this corner, so you're going to grab that thing, put it a bit of a. That's it, and then yeah, another inch up, another inch up, another inch up in there. That's it in there. Just going another yeah, inch deep. Good. Okay. Then you're gonna. Bring yourself around, there's a handhold around here for your left hand, okay? Another inch up, that's it, good. Bring your right foot, yeah. Yeah, keep swinging around, that's good, right, good. Right foot, yeah. Come around, left foot on here. Maybe there's some little edge. Okay, and then, there's a good handhold high for your right hand. That's it, good, excellent, right? Now, yeah, that's it, good. Now get your right hand in this little box slot. That sets you up. Right, now, right hand. Oh, yeah. Right hand. Good. Excellent, good. Okay, left hand up to here. Good, and then you're gonna just keep your feet at that level. Keep it going, do a finger match there. You gotta match hands on that, yep. 
Bring your right hand next to your left. Good. Yep. Keep it going. You're almost there. And you're gonna come on. You can come on. Keep going over to these holes here. You've got to get your left foot right over here. That's it. You almost got it. Yeah. Yep. Up and down. Good. Big hold over here to finish if you can. No chance. Hang in there. Come on. Beautiful. You've done it. Well done, Ron. That was good. Yeah, and then you just can walk along there and get stuck here, so. <laughs> Got a first go. It's a good problem though, isn't it? Like, yeah, that's really nice. So, nuts. as a traverse. I was with um, Inga and Timmy O'Neill, who's a well-known American climber, who had also been at the same talk as Arno, you know, and Timmy had been doing his thing. And um, anyway, uh, and I just said, uh, well, why don't you fob them off onto me? I've always wanted to do this stunt. So that's how it came about. And um, so it could have been anyone. It just happened to be Arno. And uh, yeah, so when we went climbing, I had, um, in fact, this is some of the gear I had. Actually, this box. Yeah, I can show you. Right. So when we went climbing, I had this rack, you know, it was sort of, <laughs> I, you know, I just had various bits of weird gear. You know, I, put, I, I said, oh, um, I said, we're climbing my gear, Anna, and we get there and we climb out and I've got some pegs and I've got some cams that look like this, you know. And, um, you know, and I just go, yeah, they don't work that good, but I prefer to use them as passive protection anyway. And, and uh, you know, and I'm like, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, well, let's just go, you know. So I don't even give them a chance to sort of question it too much. And then I'm climbing up the route and I'd always put a piece of gear in and um, I'd go, this one's bomber. And I'd climb past it and then I'd jiggle the rope and it would just slide down the rope. So I did this every time. And then I got to a point where I'm like, watch me, watch me. And I'm like skating around with my feet and uh, you know, all my gear slid down the rope anyway. And, uh, anyway, I get to the blade and then I start, you know, as I'm rigging the bar, I say, do you want me to belay you with a Carrigan sea chice? And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I was just making up terms. And, anyway, then I brought, brought him up and, uh, and then he led the next pitch and then I fell off everywhere. And, uh, anyway. it, was, it was funny, but he, he, he just assumed it was all, he didn't know it was a gag. And then when we topped out, you could see that he, wasn't that stoked that he was climbing the thing, you know, but he was being polite. Like, Timmy O'Neill popped out and he says, um, so Arno, what did you think of, uh, what do you think of the first climb? And, and Arno's just, he's there and he's just thinking, this, this guy's a fucking weirdo I'm climbing with. But he doesn't say it, he just goes, hmm, the rock's really nice, isn't it? <laughs> like, he just, he doesn't want to say what he thinks. He just, anyway. Oh, man.